HEC1 was the predecessor of HEC-HMS, and I don't think HEC1 has a future. You can't download HEC1 from the HEC, and the only place I know of to download it is from the Maricopa County Drainage Design Management System website by actually downloading that system which includes HEC-1. Even DDMSW is not very Windows compliant and if you install it it goes by default to an FCDMC folder in the root of your hard drive and the HEC-1 executable, which is an old DOS program, goes under FCDMCST models right there. Since it's an old DOS program, it really expects to be run from the command line, and the easiest way to do that is to write a little batch file, and this is the way HEC-1 is run. I have the full path to the HEC-1 program and then a space and then I tell it that the input equals this file name base dot dat then I put a space and I say the output equals the file name base dot out and for basic use you don't need to worry about DSS but you can put it in your batch file and then a pause so that we can see what happened before the command window closes I'll show you how it works I just double clicked on borgers.bat and you can see HEC1 running in this little window we always are looking for a normal end of HEC1. That's, that's what we want. We have to see normal end of HEC1. And then I put in a pause and we can just press any key to continue. HEC1 creates borgers.out because that's what we told it to do in the batch file. And... Um, then DDMSW has modified HEC1 to create these other files we're really not interested in. That's how you run a perfect data file, but how do you modify or create your own data file? You need to have a text editor. My favorite text editor is Notepad++. I right click and edit this with Notepad++ and the first thing you need to understand is that HEC1 is expects a data file that has spaces not tabs every little orange dot here is a space and it won't work if I replace that with a tab the other thing you need to know is that HEC1 thinks of this as having 10 columns, 8 characters long each. And it just kind of squishes the first two letters into that first column. So your columns are right justified here. They don't have to be, but they are here at up to 8, then up to 16, then 24. 32 all the way to 80 for 10 columns of 8 characters wide each. You can just eyeball that or you can create yourself a little ruler that I will do once I pause like this and these zeros represent column 10. Now pay attention closely because this will get you down and in a loop. You cannot have any blank lines in the file. If you want to pretend like there's a blank line, it must be a comment line. 
that starts with an asterisk or normally an asterisk and a space. I'll read through this short file with you briefly and then we will go to the user's manual to see how you can help yourself. You can put as many title lines as you want. They are called ID and it just looks tidy to have a space but it's not required. Then we tell HEC1 to make a diagram of all the operations and operations are things that start with a KK and we give it our time iterations and uh, how many minutes and how many of the iterations we're going to calculate. We give it an input output level information, the increment to use for any tables which of which there are none in this model. So that's a vestige from some other model and then we put in whatever we need for each operation and in this simple file there's only one operation we see a KK1 and nothing else there are really good conventions for naming your operations I will go over those in a different video HEC1 knows that this is a sub-basin operation because it starts with a basin area that can only be one thing. Then for the first one we give it some sort of precipitation and this uses one of the precipitation methods in HEC1, the hypothetical. Then we have a loss method so that we can get only the rainfall excess after the losses and this is the green and amp loss method. Then we have a unit hydrograph method or a rainfall transformation method and this is the Clark unit hydrograph method which has as a part of it a unit hydrograph area contribution um, series which makes what I said earlier wrong there is a time series every 15 minutes we tell how much percent of the watershed has arrived. The key to all of this is the HEC1 user manual and interestingly enough it is available at the HEC website. And here we have found the LG record key. The, the way to find this would be just to do a search for LG record and we find out that it is the green and amped loss rate um, rainfall loss operate, um, parameter and that column 1 and 2 are the ID for the line and that they need to say LG and then column 1, the rest of column 1 is the initial abstraction and it either has a value for how much loss is for the initial abstraction. Two is the moisture deficit. Three is the wetting front suction. Four is the hydraulic, saturated hydraulic conductivity. And five is the ratio of impervious area. And we can sometimes help ourselves in data files by putting those as our little cheat sheet right in the file. Initial abstraction. Uh, moisture deficit, wetting front suction, uh, hyd saturated hydraulic conductivity, and ratio of impervious. The four basic kinds of HEC1 operations are subbasin, combine, route, and divert, which is not shown here. You can use a sample file to see how to do the operations you want to do or you can find examples in the HEC1 manual though it's a little bit hard. In the basic sense you just pick an upstream sub-basin and start listing things and hoping that they all fall together okay. You say we're going to do sub-basin A, then we're going to do sub-basin B, then we're going to combine them. That will give us a hydrograph. We will route it. 
Then we'll jump over and add subbasin C. Now we'll combine two, which will combine this hanging routed hydrograph with the subbasin C we just computed. And that's how you go. You just go down, you leave hydrographs hanging, you add new ones, and then you combine. Like we can see in this example of the diagram that HEC1 creates for us. We have a subbasin S15. We divert it out with DDS15, which is later brought in. But for now, we take that DS15 and we route it, calling it RS15. We jump over and get subbasin S13, and then we combine those. Then we route that, and we route it again for some reason. Then we divert some of it out. Take the remainder, hold on to it while we calculate W1. Combine them. Divert out a little bit more. Leave the remainder hanging while we do a retrieval of that one diversion. Route it. Looks like we maybe store it. Do a little bit of reservoir storage. Then we do maybe a channel routing. Do a, get another subbasin, divert some of it out, and combine those two. And that's how it goes. And anything that we've left hanging, we can later on tell HEC1, right now I want to combine two hydrographs. So it'll just take this one and then the next one over. And that's how it works to connect up the linear sequential batch uh, style data into a uh, network. Now let's suppose that somebody told us they don't like green and amped losses and they don't like Clark unit hydrograph. So much for all this and so much for that. We know we need losses. We know we need some kind of rainfall transformation. So let's just leave those in there then we have to go to the HEC1 manual and search for SCS, and I found that they call it SCS Dimensionless Unit Hydrograph. And what do you know? It's a UD record. So I can just look for UD record and find out what I need to do. Maybe I should have done the losses first. I have found the UD page and it tells me that I put the lag time in column 1 and that's all I need. Maybe that's why people like it. So I just go here and I put a UD and use my little cheat sheet and go back and it says that is in hours so I put a half hour. 0.5 now I just need to figure out how to do the SAS losses. I did notice that it said S. So I'll go search for that. I searched for LS record and I found this page. It tells me that I need the starting loss, which is the initial abstraction, and then I need a curve number and an impervious. So I just go back to my file, LS, Starting loss was zero, or I can put in 0.1 inches. 0 0.1. Now I need the curve number. Those are a whole number, something like 78. And then the impervious area. And I don't know much about how SCS works. And for the benefit of my colleagues and myself in the future, I've added helpful variable abbreviations that come straight from the manual. Let's see if it still runs. I'll hit Control S to save it. Uh, I must have hit the wrong thing. Yeah, Control S and then go to this 
file folder and just hit can double click on that and we got normal end of heck one which is a really good thing and we can now open up forgers.out and we see that we got a hydrograph we have a lot of the output suppressed because we have our output level turned to five if I turned it to zero I'd see a lot more things and it would probably tell me that it is using the SCS method I didn't change my comments so they are fake now and that's the basics of heck one no blank lines use spaces to make these eight character wide columns up to ten of them and use an example file or the heck one manual to guide you in what to enter watch my heck one style tips video to make sure you look a little more like an experienced heck one modeler and a little less like a greenhorn.